Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am so happy to see you all here. Thank you so much for coming so that we can share some of what's been going on with Kubernetes SIG Security. I'm Tabitha Sable. I'm the other co-chair of Kubernetes SIG Security. And uh, it's always a delight to be able to help to make this space for us to be able to improve the safety of Kubernetes together. So to get into what we've been doing, we should start with really what are we, who are we? And the answer to that is we are the SIG with the extremely broad scope of improving security across the entire Kubernetes project for both end users and the project itself through building community action. So we, we, we actively reject the idea that there is any one person or any one group that can set themselves up as a central authority that is capable of making Kubernetes secure. There's, there's no one person that could build Kubernetes. There's no one person that can help to make Kubernetes better. And so therefore, we have set ourselves up to be a group that brings everyone together to identify where there's places that things can be improved, find the folks who can improve them, find the folks who are able to improve them at the time, and we show up, we do the work, we do it together, we help each other grow. So that means that we work on feature improvements, like for example, we were part of the, part of the group that got the replacement for pod security policy off the ground, um, along with folks from SIG Auth and a lot of other, a lot of other folks from the Kubernetes community. Um, we work on making process improvements, like for example, we are, a, uh, we are a way that the security response committee can bring things to the public when they need feedback on their processes and in general processes for Kubernetes as a project and also helping with documentation improvements because having folks with a specialized security interest or specialized security experience together means that we can find folks who are able to contribute when there's documentation improvements that need to be made. We also offer security related services within the Kubernetes project, like for example, the uh, third party security audit that, uh, that is run periodically and the security self-assessments, those like guided self-assessments that can be done for other SIGs. We, you know, we are here to help to make those happen. And you know, like I had alluded to before, the way that we do that is by building a community so that folks who have a security interest can come and they can bring their gifts. And so that means that sometimes we have very, very new people, people who are new to Kubernetes, people who are new to security, sometimes people who are new to both, but they can come, they can listen, ask questions, and that is a meaningful way to contribute to the group. That is being part of the group. Some of the folks who, some of the folks who attend, some of the folks who contribute are the very well-known security experts that you know that you see in conference talks that you read the blog posts of and so on and all of us in between because we all have something that we can bring and also that means that we do almost nothing all by ourselves because kubernetes isn't built by any one particular person or group and so therefore a lot of the things that we do are working in collaboration with other SIGs in order to help those folks in the other SIGs feel more empowered, feel safer of discharging their responsibilities to make Kubernetes more secure in the areas that they maintain, like you know, SIG auth, SIG node, all of all of those all of those SIGs. So that's that's a fair bit about us as a general group. And a fair amount of the work is also done in the subprojects, and we will be hearing from our fabulous subproject owners today about them. So to get started on that, I am going to give the mic to Ray. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Ray Lahano. 
Um, I am the subproject owner or lead for the third party security audit, uh, but you might see me in other parts of the project. I'm also the, the SIG Darts co chair and also the um, 123 release lead and the marriage advisor for 125. So the third party security audit subproject, our, our goal is to run regular third party security audits. Uh, our overall goal is to make the whole project more secure, but the last audit was ran in 2019, where there were 34 significant Kubernetes vulns discovered, like uh, credentials were exposed as environment variables and secure TL TLS by default, uh, no SecOp by default, so as of 119, you can have SecOp by default as well. And there's many more, you can read about it um, in the findings and all that are published. Next slide, please. So I want to announce that the third party security audit for this year is actually in progress. Um, and thank you very much. And NCC Group was selected to conduct the 2021-2022 audit. The RFP was, uh, was released in 2021. Uh, we received four proposals for the RFP um, and the went through evaluation by security experts and also Kubernetes experts as well. You can read about the decision process on that, that's on our GitHub, that's linked on the slides avail that are available. The audits will be based on Kubernetes 1.24, which was just released a few weeks ago. And there's a lot of changes from 2019 to, to 2022. So we are very mindful on the changes like dual stack, pod security uh, mission controller uh, going to be, that's in beta in 1.24 and PSP is being removed in 125, but so it's deprecated. Uh, there's a, lots of architectural change, lots of things that have gone GA since then, like to control create token, et cetera. So we're very mindful and co cognizant of those changes uh, for this audit. Uh, next slide, please. So of course, the primary scope is gonna be most of the core Kubernetes uh, concepts that you see here, the API server, uh, the scheduler, the control manager, kubelet, kube proxy. One thing, one component that we uh, did include that's in scope is the secret store, secret store CSI driver, where you could store secrets externally and you can mount it in a pod, uh, can mount it as a volume, uh, and they'll be in your container file system. Uh, we see this more widely used, so that's why we decided to be uh, in, the, in the primary scope of the security audit. And secondary st scope is, of course, etcd, because it's, uh, it is another, another separate project as well. And the Cloud Controller Manager, just because not every uh, Kubernetes user will use the, the Cloud Controller Manager as well. Uh, next scope, uh, next slide, okay. So what's next for the, uh, for the sub-project? We're gonna publish the findings. Um, also, the pro this project, Kubernetes project, is so large. There are 47, uh, 46 enhancements in 124, 47 in uh, 123, over 50 in the last of the previous two. And in 115, there's only 25. So we see this velocity increase and almost double with each release. So, and also we release from four releases a year, now three releases a year, so from 2019 to 2022. That's a lot of releases. So what we've done is that we created an audit roadmap. There are many components of Kubernetes that are not in scope. So what, what, what we wanna do is include these and run a smaller scale uh, security audits on these, third-party security audits in these. So we want to establish a roadmap, so things like cluster API will be included, or Windows Worker Nodes will also be included as well in the near future. Uh, I think that's it, next slide. So unfortunately, our uh, fourth co-speaker was not able to join us in person today, but he's able to join us through the magic of modern technology. So I'm gonna hand it over to him. Hi everyone, this is Pushkar Zovekar. Unfortunately, I'm not able to join you in person this time, but I'm going to share what I wanted to share in person through this small set of videos. So tooling is one of our sub-projects in SIG security. And like many other sub-projects, uh, we also work across the board, helping multiple teams and getting help from multiple teams at the same time. So let me share a bit about that in my video. So the main job for tooling is to build, enhance and improve security through code by working across six and other sub projects. And because the community is so awesome, sometimes everything just aligns itself as magically as this picture 
where the clouds and the path are just aligned and I was just walking across this place one day and I couldn't help myself really thinking about how this really represents how the community really works where uh, each cloud could be one of the six that we work with and right on the grasslands is six security trying to find alignment and everyone coming together to make their dreams about Kubernetes security come true. So sometimes, although it can be a bit confusing, uh, it can be a bit overwhelming as well to understand how do I even go about fixing things that are important for me in security. I was in a similar state and the best way I can explain it is by doubling down on our theme of oranges for this coupon and again showing you this. So let's assume this orange or mandarin or whatever your favorite citrus fruit is, is Kubernetes security and this is the cost of securing Kubernetes. So now the goal of us is to reduce this sticker price. But this Kubernetes security itself cannot be fixed by me or everyone else on the stage, but it needs everybody's help. So what do you have to do? If you have to consume and make it easy and reduce the sticker price, or want to make sure that it's worthwhile, you peel the orange. So let's peel it together. And when I started peeling the orange, just like I was trying to get myself familiar with the community, what I realized is, oh, look at that. It looks like one fruit, but if you see this orange really is made up of so many different things I can contribute at a time. So let's say this is one of the six, maybe SIG release. This is uh, one other SIG, SIG architecture. And then there are other SIG, like SIG Contribex. Then we have SIG Kates and Fra. All of them look similar, but until and unless they all come together, we can't really secure it and we can't really feel like we are there. So that's what I had to do, figuring out how to peel the orange, which is a community in this case, and how to figure out a pathway where everyone can come together and make their dreams of Kubernetes security come true. So hopefully this helps. We, and one of the things I also realized is not everyone is at the same expertise level as everybody else. So what we did as part of that was create a space for new contributors to share and learn. And what I realized is not only new and existing contributors who are interested, but they were excited to share about things they have learned, things they have been working on and get feedback from the community. So, so far, we have had these learning sessions. We do it once every month, most of the times, unless people are not available. And we record it. And people join in, people give feedback, people ask questions. And the best part is, you too can be a part of this speaker list. All you have to do is hit the link in, on the slides and then go there describe what you want to share with the rest of the group. As long as it's not a sales pitch, as long as it's not a vendor pitch, and it's related to security and Kubernetes community, we will be glad to host you in one of these learning sessions. Hi everyone. So next thing I wanted to talk to you all about is a story of a raccoon and a turtle. So raccoon, if that I met recently has been a very knowledgeable raccoon who knows a bit or maybe a lot about security. And then there were a bunch of turtles stacked on top of each other who were doing great things and they were marching along towards great management of clusters, but they weren't sure or they needed help and they were in fact intelligent and brave enough to share that they needed help to secure what they were trying to build together. So the raccoon said, hey, you know, I can actually help um, and I'll be happy to do it. 
but we need a meeting place because I know you like to be near water and I'm not really a water person. So that's where I came in. And the story is Raccoon, who is the logo of our tax security at CNCF and Turtles on stacked on top of Turtles is the logo of Cluster API were really two groups inside the community who are trying to come together. And I said, I'll host a space for you. And this is how security self-assessments was born. So let's talk a bit about that. So this is CNCF tax security, Kubernetes security, that's us. And this is cluster API. So, so far what we have done is we work together, we borrowed more many of the templates about doing a self-assessment for uh, that's focused on security from CNCF tax security, try to apply what we could apply for cluster API, and then wrote up uh, a threat model uh, or a self-assessment doc, which basically was a culmination of multiple meetings that and discussions and Slack threads and mailing, li mailing list conversations that culminated into data flow diagrams, multiple threads that we have identified and things that we're going to work on. So now you can actually see our work, which is under review uh, by hitting this link that will point you to a pull request that explains everything we have found out, everything we are going to fix and you can come in, contribute, take a look, read up for, on it, and see if you can lend a helping hand to all of us. So that's about security self-assessment. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll hand it back over to the people on stage. Bye. Hello, everyone. My name is Savita Raghunathan, and I am the lead for the SIG security documentation so project. So, can you all hear me? Yeah, okay. Uh, so there is the SIG documentation folks who have been doing amazing job. There is one of the coach are here. Another one is just sitting there. Hi. And what are we doing here at the SIG security subproject, right? Documentation subproject. We are here to support them. And we are here to also achieve a goal that the go Kubernetes documentation, the website is actually really, really great. And if you want to learn a product, if you want to implement, if you want to like break the product, uh, all you have to do is like take a look at the documentation, right? And um, one of the things that we want to do is like make the Kubernetes website the single stop for everything related to Kubernetes security. Now, um, if you go look at it, it's all over the place um, and the documentation on security in some places are very thin. So that's, for, that's what we are working on. And as you know it, and if you have heard all my other coach, uh, co leads in the chairs talk, ab talk about our SIG security, you know, like we love collaborating and contributing together. And that's what we do in this little project as well. So we want to like call all the beginners who want to learn about security. All you have to like bring to this group is that uh, mindset, um, have the security mentality that everything needs to be like secure by default. It's not an afterthought and that's what we want and just a passion to learn and share knowledge. We love sharing and you saw Pushkar showing the uh, uh, like the tooling of project, how they are doing the demo videos and the um, stuff. So we love sharing. So that's what we do here. And another, while we do that, we also try and improve the existing examples and the documentation, add new ones. And um, also we want to create a security awareness to everyone. Like um, again, um, when you are developing a product, uh, submitting a project design or anything, you should always have security in your mind and your design and your product should include that. It's not an afterthought. So that's what we want to create. Like when you look at Kubernetes, you need to know like it comes with security. So we are trying to create that um, awareness uh, through this project. Now that we have discussed a bit about like the project goals and 
uh, we will actually, uh, in this session, go much more uh, deep dive into what we have been doing since the SIG security uh, the, uh, group uh, was started uh, with respect to the uh, documentation area. So the, we have like a couple of current projects and one of them is, um, uh, yeah, thank you. One of them is a security uh, checklist that amazing folks have been working on. And at first, we're gonna focus on the administrator perspective, the operator perspective, and we wanna expand it to the application developer perspective. Then um, after that, the next version would be for the application developer perspective. Why do we wanna do this? That the operator and the developer can print this sheet or like have it side by side and like check, 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 and then go to bed with peace. You know, like, okay, my cluster is secure by default. To an extent, I'm not saying that this is the bulletproof list. You have to be also like very aware and like uh, do the due diligence, but this gives you like a basic list of uh, the things that's needed. And the next up uh, is gonna be the PSP deprecation. And, um, and uh, we already talked about it, that it's gonna be deprecated in 1.25. And what are we gonna do? Uh, we are gonna work with SIG auth and SIG documentation and support them um, to figure out how we can help, like uh, updating the examples, making a transition plan, right? Adding more blog posts and so on. So that's the next project that's gonna come up. Um, this is like the main two for like next, for the next quarter or like four or five months. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so let's take a deep uh, uh, dive into like uh, what we have been doing. So I have divided this into like three categories. One is the blogs, the next up is the um, tutorials and tasks, and the next up is the uh, papers and threat models. So let's look into blogs. The first one is about the NSA CS CISA Kubernetes Hardening Guide. You all would have seen it. Um, the NSA and CSA, CISA people published the hardening guide um, in August 2021. They did publish the new version in uh, March 2022. This blog post is a um, complementary to that guide. If you haven't read it, you should read that. It's not like, like you can just read this one and like ignore. This is just gonna be like highlighting the key takeaways and also like add alternate options that the version um, 1.0 might have missed, but the NSA CISA people were so kind. They included the co-authors of this blog in their version v.11 um, to uh, get our feedback. And this is what we talk about collaboration, right folks? Like it's just not about within the SIG and like among community SIG or like within Kubernetes and CNCF tag security. It's about like everywhere. Like we love to collaborate with everyone and like we wanna make security, Kubernetes security a better, in, in, leave Kubernetes security in a better state. Like just like Pushka described. Um, I can't get that orange uh, uh, analogy out of my mind. I love oranges. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so that is the first blog. And the second uh, blog is about um, the, how we collaborate between the TAG uh, security, um, which is the CNCF uh, um, uh, group for um, security, it's like version of SIG security, um, how we collaborate between those two groups and it highlights the white paper that was published. And recently uh, there was the uh, version two of the white paper that was published and that was led by Pushkar again. He was being the bridge between the two groups. And um, why I wanna mention this uh, is that like while we were doing some of the work and we found that there have been certain portion of the doc, uh, website that needs update and it created opportunities for the new contributors who wanted to learn and like uh, contribute more or like also the veterans who want to review and add their input and stuff like that. So like uh, it was very awesome to see people come together from like different backgrounds and like different mindsets. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next one that is uh, the um, that is about the securing um, admission controllers, right? You might have used um, authentication, authorization, and admission webhook is like another way to 
secure add security to your cluster but if you um, what happens if you don't uh, secure the deployment itself right like if you just uh, give wrong permissions or like if it's not um, um, if there is a security loophole that you can go get in the entire cluster and then you can do like anything that the hackers not the right uh, the bad guys can get in the uh, cluster and can do anything that they want. Um, so this post uh, describes about the ways um, of best practices to deploy a um, uh, admission controller. And it also talks about uh, other things in addition to that, not just that, that like it talks about the uh, privilege escalation and the denial of service risk associated. Um, like if you don't configure your deployment correctly. So give it a read if you haven't. The final one is my favorite, right? Whenever I think of Harback, I'm thinking of this quote, and I have mentioned this in the last time, and I will mention it again. And it's like, we are all made up of stars, but your Harback shouldn't be, right? Like you shouldn't have like wide open permission, and you don't know, like, if you haven't met Ian Coldwater, they are sitting right here. You can wave at them. They're awesome. Um, uh, so, like, this guide takes you through the uh, best practices again, like what you can do to secure uh, secure your RBAC, uh, uh, RBAC, um, RBAC in your cluster. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Yeah. So we'll move on to the tutorials and um, tasks. So we talked about the part uh, PSP deprecation, right? So the thing that is re replacing the PSP is the pod security standards. And uh, these are the two examples. The first two are the tutorials that's going to walk you through how to um, apply them at the cluster level and the namespace level. All you need is kind and kubectl. I know one of the fellow contributor is also working on improving it by uh, using container D. Uh, and that's going to come out soon. Um, keep an eye out for that if you don't have Docker in your local system or at your work machine that some places that you cannot um, like with all the changes, recent changes. So if you have container D, so someone is also working on or going to work on that. So um, when we have it, we will publish that as well. And the last one is my favorite. Like we love collaborating. So the SIG security and the SIG release uh, collaborated on the supply chain security, right? Like that is the buzzword for now, like everywhere it's there. And I think with the uh, 1.24, 1.25, the uh, Kubernetes release team is aiming to make Kubernetes salsa level three. Um, with 1.24, they did uh, release uh, the container, uh, the control pane container images that can be, that are signed and you can verify it. There is this little task in here. You can go and run like a few commands to see uh, the um, verified signatures. So that, that is pretty cool and neat, I think. Um, and the next one, please. Thank you. So uh, let's talk about the papers and threat models. Not only like we, we just focus, we don't just focus on the website. We also like try to add a, uh, documentation about like threat models and like white papers and whatnot. The first one is again about the admission control. Um, it talks about like uh, the attack surface if you deploy the admission control and not the secure way. It takes you through the threats and it also has mitigations um, listed in that. And the next up is the policy management. And that one talks about why do we need policy and how you can implement policy in your Kubernetes cluster. Um, I think that's all the work that we have done so far. And we have like many more to come. On the next slide, please. So if you're interested, right, this is where we need all your help. If you're interested, if you have an idea, if you want to like stop by and contribute, you don't need to have any experience. All you need to have is come with the mentality that you want to learn, share, and grow. And you have you think about security all the time, right? So please stop by the Slack channel. We meet once a month, and we are not so particular about the meeting. If you cannot make it, we do a lot of asynchronous collaboration. I'm all in for that because sometimes there was a time that I didn't even know that meeting was happening and it dropped off my calendar and I couldn't make it. So like folks are so nice that we caught up on asynchronous uh, Slack thread. 
So things happen, and you cannot make it. We all can chat about it like in a thread, publicly. Um, so that's all from me. I'm going to pass it back um, to Tabby. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I've, I've been really happy to, to hear some of these updates and to be part of sharing them. Um, because of the way that we work on this basis of sh people showing up consensually and working together in the places where they can, really wanted to give credit to all of the folks who are involved. Like, we, we do a lot to make that space and to make it so that there are these opportunities for us to be able to work together. But that's, you know, that's only the beginning of it. The, the fact that we all come together is, is where the, the magic there is. But really couldn't get everybody's name together on a slide. So like, really shout out to everybody. We, we show up, we learn, grow, we do the work, we do it together. That's, that's the way that we can make Kubernetes better. Um, you know, can't really get everybody on the slide. Like, we're now at almost a thousand people in the Slack channel, and, you know, every couple of weeks we get together to, to address the things, that are, the things that are on our mind, the things that are in progress, and, uh, you know, usually that's over a dozen folks who are, who are sharing things and, and working things out together. So you can, you can come and join us. You can, you can be part of that. We have a bi-weekly SIG meeting on Thursdays. It's at 9 a.m. Pacific. Slack is open 24-7. And, uh, you know, you can find out more by looking at the official documentation in K-Community. The question is, what Slack is SIG Security in? That is, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. This is on Kubernetes Slack, channel, channel SIG Security. Thank you very much. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. We have a couple of minutes if folks have questions. <laughs> Thank you all so much. We have time for a question or two. Does anyone have a question or two for our uh, presenters here? You in the back. The question is, what are some areas of the SIG that we would like to grow but wish that we had more help in it specifically? Um, should I give the, yeah? Um, yeah, it's, uh, sure. So I would like to have more contributors coming and doing some security documentation. That is because I'm just selfish and I'm like leading that, but I'm, I'm also gonna say like we could use the help and across the SIG, right? Like there could be new, new things that we don't know or we are overseeing. Um, like we know it, but we might not know that that's what the contributors and the people who are consuming might need it. So even if you, if anyone thinks about it and even if they like suggest it to us, that would be a big help, right? Like if they want to see another self-assessment security self-assessment and things like that. So I'm going to just pass it over. Yeah, I would say because of the way that we make decisions collectively, we, you know, we, we build consensus to make decisions, um, folks can help in part by, by coming and being part of that process because sometimes there are ideas that are there and are good ideas, but at the time there aren't, uh, you know, there aren't folks who can work on it. And so if somebody, if somebody comes and wants to contribute, you can, you can come and ask and say, hey, what's, what's going on? These are my interests. And there's, there's ideas. There are some issues there. And also there are, there are ideas that are in the, uh, in the meeting notes. So general, general contribution, like bring, bring yourself. And, and there are things that we can do together. Anything else? I'll repeat it. Um, the, the question is um, something that uh, SIG CLI was talking about um, 
growing more long-term contributors to the SIG and folks who have an ability to make a commitment and show up over time, having access to, to mentorship opportunities and encouragement to climb the contributor ladder, and is that similar? That is absolutely similar. Like, that is what we are built out of. The, the general process for where SIG security sub-projects come from is the confluence of an opportunity and folks who can be there to, to run with that. And so like, for example, with the security self-assessments like, like Pushkar was describing, there was, there was an initial request, can we do this? Um, we discussed it together and you know, we, we realized that this was a service that we could offer. And so this first one is done by the folks who were there like as, as a project that the SIG in general was, was taken care of. And as that went through, there was the realization that that could be made into a process and there was an opportunity there to mentor someone into a sub-project owner role and that's happening now. And so like that's, that's how we live and breathe. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wanna say that, I could say that for most of the SIGs in Kubernetes that we welcome new folks to, be, uh, to grow, to become maintainers, not just SIG security, but most of the SIGs. We are at time also because I literally cannot help myself and I'm the co-chair. If you are involved in other SIGs, um, we also encourage collaboration from other SIGs with us. So like come and talk to us at SIG Security. If you have thoughts on security stuff, we'd love to work with you. Um, this, we are at time. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you all so much for presenting. I really appreciate you coming and talking here. And uh, if you have questions for the presenters, um, come and talk to them. Thank you. Thank you all. Also, lots of thanks to the fabulous AV folks who helped us out with the special needs that we had. Thank you.